Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Uh, as always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, go subscribe there and uh, snag your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Great little study guide. Uh, absolutely free, no cost to you, simply just an email uh, to get notifications when we've got uh, new podcasts and, and new content available there. So again, go to reallifepharmacology.com and uh, snag that uh, free resource uh, right there. All right, so let's uh, talk about the drug of the day today, and that is going to be colchicine. Uh, brand name of this medication is Colchris. That's the most common uh brand name that I hear in clinical practice anyway. And this medication does have a bunch of unique uses. Uh, however, uh, 99% of the time, uh, the indication that I see this medication used for is gout. Uh, that is mostly what I'm going to focus on. Uh, there's things like Mediterranean fever. Uh, there has been uh, potentially some evidence in reducing cardiovascular risk as a secondary prevention uh, type agent. Uh, I can't say at the time I, I'm creating this podcast that I'm, you know, real sold on the evidence and, and the risk versus benefit of, of doing that, but uh, that may be a, a something that you see more evidence on uh, going forward in the future. Uh, but again, I'm going to focus mainly uh, on that gout indication. So mechanistically, uh, how does it work? Uh, it blocks beta tubulin polymerization into microtubules, which ultimately uh, reduces the activation or activity uh, of neutrophils. Okay, And in gout, remember inflammation plays a huge role in the pain associated with a gout flare. Uh, neutrophils are really going to uh, facilitate and exacerbate that inflammation and pain. So again, by kind of reducing uh, that activation, um, activity of those neutrophils, we can help manage symptoms of a gout flare. All right, thinking about kind of guidelines and what we use for therapy, uh, particularly with uh, gout flares, Colchizine is an option here. Um, however, in, in clinical practice, I would say I see steroids, uh, corticosteroids, and NSAIDs generally used uh, more commonly or at least tried first. Uh, and there might be some exceptions to that. So, you know, if you've got a patient with a significant GI bleed history, that's probably a situation where you might avoid an NSAID and, and prefer colchizine. Uh, Corticosteroids, so if you've got a patient, uh, let's say, that's having frequent flares and we're having to give corticosteroids a lot, uh, then we start to get into the risk of some of the long-term complications with corticosteroid use. So again, in a patient with frequent gout flares, maybe corticosteroids, giving them often isn't really a, a great option with you know, some of the risks for osteoporosis and hyperglycemia and then, of course, uh, HPA suppression and things like that. So um, colchizine uh, is a potential option for uh, gout flares for sure. Um, and then occasionally you will see it uh, used for gout kind of prophylaxis and prevention as well. Um, but I would say that's probably less less common. Uh, it is important to think about the adverse effect profile too. So I mentioned, you know, NSAIDs, if somebody's got a GI bleed, we'd avoid that, you know, frequent use, corticosteroid, and that adverse effect profile, there may be reasons we'd avoid steroids. Um, colchizine's biggest, uh, I guess, adverse effect to be concerned about 
a most common adverse effect is diarrhea and GI upset. Uh, diarrhea is by far the predominant adverse effect that you're going to see. Uh, so it's really, really important to, to pay attention to that. Um, I know I've seen plenty of examples of the prescribing cascade uh, based upon colchicine and its adverse effect profile. Uh, so prescribing cascade, that's where we give one drug and we've got to manage side effects of that drug with another medication. So keeping an eye out for drugs like uh, lopiramide or lamotil, where we're trying to manage diarrhea symptoms, um, take a look at that med list and, and make sure they're not uh, taking colchicine there, for example. Uh, other possible complications, um, myopathy is a potential adverse effects, muscle pain and that type of thing. Again, not, not very common, not something I've seen uh, in practice on a regular basis at all, um, but it is something to think about. Uh, reduced uh, B12 absorption, uh, potentially with, with supplements and, and things like that. And um, I'll maybe mention that in drug interactions too, but that's something to think about. Uh, and then there are some rare, uh, obviously, adverse effects like there are with most drugs, uh, you know, hematologic issues, uh, pancytopenia, low platelets, anemia, leukopenia. So again, just things that, you know, if it creeps up where, you know, labs are off or whatever the case may be, you know, colchicine may be one of those medications that we uh, take a peek and, and rule out and, and make sure that uh, a recent addition of colchicine hasn't caused any of those, again, very, very rare uh, issues there. All right, so let's talk about uh, metabolism and elimination a little bit because uh, this is important. So, uh, colchicine is significantly metabolized by CYP3A4. Uh, so we know drug interactions are going to come into play. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that after the, the break. Um, but we also got to remember that, you know, if we've got pharmacogenetic variations, certain patients, uh, ones that, you know, don't have, uh, you know, a high normal functioning CYP3A4 uh, enzyme, those patients may be at greater risk for adverse effects from colchicine, okay? Uh, renal elimination, so it is uh, renally eliminated or partly dependent upon that as well. So patients with rising creatinine or falling GFR, however you want to say it or, or however you know it by, uh, those patients could have an accumulation of colchicine and uh, in the patient population I deal with, the elderly, uh, that's probably where you're, you're most likely uh, to see that risk. Um, if we're using higher doses and that kidney function declines over time, um, those uh, dosages could potentially lead to uh, various toxicities. All right, so let's take a quick break and then we'll uh, dive a little deeper into uh, drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, like medication therapy management, pharmacotherapy, uh, ambulatory care, psychiatric exam, geriatrics exam, uh, go check out meded101.com slash store. You've got links to all sorts of different resources there. Uh, if you'd like to take advantage of, of clinical content, maybe you're not a pharmacist, um, again, links at meded101.com slash store. Uh, we've got links to free Audible books. So if you um, try Audible for the first time, they will give you a book for free. And I've got an example, a free 10-hour uh, book on drug interactions that you can absolutely uh, have for free if you've never tried Audible before. So, And we've got a lot of books on Amazon and things like that as well. So again, go check out all those links, uh, support uh, our sponsor, help support this po podcast uh, at meded101.com slash store. All right, so let's finish up with drug interactions. Uh, the, the two biggest, most important things to remember, I think, with drug interactions are CYP3A4. So that's, in, in my book, that's probably going to be number one. Uh, drugs like erythromycin, uh, diltiazem, verapamil, clarithromycin, uh, some of the azole antifungals, uh, grapefruit juice, all those drugs can potentially raise the concentrations 
of colchicine and lead to increased risk of, of toxicity. Uh, we also um, have a dependence on p glycoprotein, uh, ABCB1 inhibitors, so drugs like amiodarone, uh, carvedilol, azithromycin, um, erythromycin, verapamil, uh, all those drugs uh, fall in that category. And again, the, these are just some of the most common medications that you're, you're potentially going to see in practice. This isn't an exhaustive list. Um, so keep that in mind. If, you know, maybe we've had a bunch of medication changes and now patients, you know, displaying new symptoms of, let's say, diarrhea or stomach upset, um, it could be the new medications you added, but it also could be drug interactions that are leading to higher concentrations of another medication, and obviously in this case, colchicine. Okay, so really uh, pay attention because colchicine does um, maybe have a, a few more drug interactions than, than most medications do. And then the last um, yeah, drug interaction I, I wanted to mention uh, it's not crazy high uh, on my list of, of things to watch out for, but uh, if you ever got a patient, have a patient that has myopathy symptoms, um, statins and fibrates in combination uh, with colchicine could potentially increase that risk for myopathy. So, kind of one last one to, to think about there. Again, not an all inclusive list on drug interactions and things like that, but. Um, certainly something to uh, uh, keep in, in mind there as well. And then lastly, I did want to mention that um, there is potential, there has been reports that uh, colchicine can potentially uh, reduce the absorption of uh, certain vitamins and, and things like that. So uh, cyanocobalamin or B12 supplementation um, may be at, at kind of highest risk of, of having lower levels absorbed. So you know, in a patient on colchicine and, and maybe we're displaying some signs of B12 deficiency or something, uh, that definitely might be something to, to keep in the back of your mind to, to monitor and, and uh, look out for. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed the podcast, found it helpful, uh, leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. That's greatly appreciated. Um, no brainer to go subscribe at reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free uh, 31 page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Uh, it's going to be a great little refresher for you and or uh, if you're a student, potentially help you with, with board exams and, and things like that. So um, go snag that and, of course, go support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Find all the links to uh, Audible books and Amazon books uh, as well as study materials for uh, pharmacists and things like that. So... Uh, I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on Chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.